Sweden is one of the world's most tolerant countries. Few would deny that Sweden is one of the world's most tolerant and humane countries. Clear evidence of the country's tolerance and humanism is our very generous immigration policy, which in turn meant that people from every corner of the world want to come here and stay for good. Nevertheless, we are constantly told that racism and xenophobia are widespread phenomena in the country. These claims often made by people who, for some inscrutable reason made to entrepreneurs of their own peculiar definitions of concepts. But how reliable are these proponents of anti-racism and humanity, through their naming and shaming is constantly working to increase the range of racists. In Sweden, it is not enough to forcefully repudiate racism and all forms of degradation of various ethnic groups. The risk is very great that it takes such an approach still gets singled out as a racist because he is not observant of what all racist hunters call the hidden or structural racism. Life is indeed tricky when it is not enough to renounce racism if we do not also relate properly to candy, pastries, ice cream names, neighborhood names, illustrations of children's books and children's literature, etc. According to the group of self-appointed censors who amass shall prevail. In addition, those who want to avoid being labeled as a racist also must weigh every word that is said on pretty big deal which definitely threatens to impede free communication between people. In the recent past has three ministers, Bill Power, Ash and Rain Felt, who all belong to an immigration-friendly party have been criticized for words as they failed to weigh on pretty big deal. To the point is that I would never come up with the idea to write a tribute article to any of these ministers but at the same time, it is so that it feels natural to react when someone suffers criticism becomes too sweeping and unfair. In daily life, it is reasonable for most people who get to hear a statement that they find incomprehensible or offensive to attempt to discover what the who formulated the statement meant. And I think most people are usually willing to do a benevolent interpretation. This approach, however, appears to be totally foreign to those who usually cites ministers. For journalists in newspapers, radio, and television, it is instead the opposite rule that constantly makes its presence felt. Interpretations of more or less strange statements to be made with the greatest possible degree of malice. Otherwise, I find it hard to understand their actions. Tobias Billstrom has that familiar hands down an opinion on the blonde and blue-eyed Swedes who received not only journalists to stand in queue for condemnation. The most sumptuous disapproval is his chief Frederick Rain felt. He has managed to make an appearance that should be able to get all the chief trainers green with envy. A better example of how not to treat subordinates would be hard to find. Bill's statement is surprising given his political experience and knowledge of what is and is.